we've seen before that when we're making a single measurement of say temperature or pressure or any quantity, we can have uncertainties from multiple sources in that single measurement. There's the zero uns order uncertainty of, of resolution and a first order uncertainty associated with noise and we can go up to many, many orders of uncertainty. And because we have Gaussian distributions and the variances of Gaussians combine as a sum, we wind up with this square root of the sum of the squares for each of the uncertainties. So it's fairly straightforward if I know that I get an uncertainty of plus or minus two degrees Celsius from my resolution and an uncertainty of plus or minus one degree Celsius from my uh, uh, noise, then I'll have two squared is four plus one squared gives me five and I take the square root and it's a little bit more than two is my overall uncertainty. Now the same sort of math applies with Gaussian distributions when we're combining multiple uncertainties in a compound measurement. So if we have a result that's composed of measurements of multiple different quantities, say x1, x2, x3, and so on, then we can get the uncertainty for that result in the same kind of way. The uncertainty of the result will still have a large square root. We're going to have the uncertainty of x1 involved, and it's going to have to have a square on it. We're going to have the uncertainty of x2 involved, and it's going to have to have a square. We're going to have the uncertainty of x3 involved, and it's going to have to have a square, and so on. So let's make sure that we keep all of those under the same square root sign. We're going to sum the squares. But these different inputs to the final result may have different levels of influence. So we're not just interested in how uncertain is x1. We need to go and look at how much of an effect that has on the final result r. And we can see how big an effect that has on the final result by taking the partial derivative of x1 of r with x1. So di r di x1 times the uncertainty in x1, that'll tell us how much r will change if we make a small change, uncertainty of x1, in the overall uh, value of x1. So if we put those two together, that's the uncertainty in R that results from a small change in X1. That's the equivalent to these terms up here, the contribution to the overall measurement. Similarly, if we're interested in how much of a contribution we get from X2, we're going to need to calculate the derivative di r di x2. Multiply that by the small change in x2, the ux2, and square that. Likewise, di r di x3 times the small change in x3, the uncertainty in x3, to get the contribution from x3. Sum the squares. Now, to apply this, you really need to be able to take a derivative of this, uh, this function here. And if we don't know what that function is, it may be difficult. So we need to be able to calculate di r di x1, for example, and figure out what it is. That's going to be really easy if we have a really simple function like uh, say a sum or or a multiplication. It may be more difficult if the uh, result is some complicated function of all of these variables. But let's try one that's really simple for a start. Uh, flow work. In thermodynamics you already know that work done has something to do with pressure times change in volume. So that's pressure volume work that's being done. And the power required to do that work, that's work per unit time, will be W dot equal to the pressure times the flow rate. 
at which things are flowing. And this is really important in, for example, hydraulic power or uh, pumps. And we'll see that showing up in, in later years. But just as an example, all we need to know is what this function looks like. So if W dot is a combination of P and Q, and we're measuring P and Q, the pressure and the flow rate, then we can figure out what the uncertainty will be in W dot if we know the uncertainties in P and Q. So we need to know what the uncertainty in P is and the uncertainty in Q to lead us to the uncertainty in the overall fl fluid power that's, that's applied. We can take a direct analytic approach. This is a really easy function to cope with. I can do derivatives of that really easily. So we can take the uncertainty in W dot will be equal to the square root. The X1 term will be di W dot because W dot is the result, di, well, P is the first thing here, so let's do the P term first. We'll multiply that by the uncertainty in P. We'll square it. That's how much the uncertainty in the pressure will contribute to the uncertainty in the overall fluid power. Then we'll consider the second term, and there's only two variables in this function. And we'll have di w dot, di q, and then the uncertainty in q, all squared, and then take the square root of the whole thing. And w dot is p times q, so di w dot di p is q, and di w dot di q is p. I can take derivatives that, that way. So I'll wind up with square root of di w dot di p is q times the uncertainty in p squared plus di w dot di q is p times the uncertainty in q squared. So if I know all of these quantities, I know for the particular point I'm measuring what P and Q are and what the uncertainty in each of those are, I can calculate directly the uncertainty in the overall measurement. And that uncertainty in the overall me measurement, it's important to remember that that is a function of the measured quantities, P and Q. It's not going to be a constant. It'll vary over the range of P and Q in general. So that's an easy calculation to do if this is an easy function to take the derivative of. And that's the way I would tackle this problem if I was doing it on paper every time. However, if I was trying to do the problem in computer code, it might be easier to do it numerically with a linear approximation. I'm just going to approximate the derivatives. So di w dot di p, well, that's going to be really well approximated by w dot at p plus some small delta p and q minus w dot at p and q divided by, of course, delta p. That's from the definition of a derivative. So if I'm having trouble taking partial derivatives of my function here, I can solve that problem by just taking uh, a numerical approximation, a linear numerical approximation of that derivative. This is not as easy to do on paper. There's multiple calculations in here, uh, but it's really easy to do in computer code. Likewise, di w dot di q will be equal to w dot at p and q plus delta q minus w dot at p and q 
all over delta Q. And it doesn't matter what these values of delta P and delta Q are that you use, you'll get about the same result as long as they're small compared to the overall quantity. So that should be, that should be easy to make the calculation numerically of what those derivatives are. You substitute in, and that will get you the uncertainty in W dot without analytical di W dot di P, for example. That can be hugely advantageous if this function is more complicated than maybe just a simple multiple or a sum. So not so easy on paper, way easier in code. Especially if you've already defined some function, let's call it w dot. So we'll define a function w dot of p and q. Then we can use that in here to make our calculations. We could even define another function, uncertainty in w dot of p q, up, uq, and use that to calculate our uncertainty in every single measurement that we make of our uh, fluid power. Now this requires that we make a linear approximation which is assuming that these functions are well behaved and easily differentiable. That may not be the case. There may be things going on that are a little more peculiar, particularly if you've got discrete step changes in the response of your system, like you do when you're uh, using an analog to digital converter to turn a uh, continuous variable into a series of digital steps that approximate that variable. So. For more complex situations, you can try a Monte Carlo simulation. They're named Monte Carlo simulations because basically you just keep rolling the dice multiple times, like the casino in Monte Carlo, and see how the results turn out. So, calculate W dot many times. with simulated inputs that we're going to add a random uncertainty. And then look at what the spread and results is. If we take, for example, on one case, the measured pressure as in our simulation as the pressure we actually have, plus some normally distributed random, random number uh, with a standard deviation equal to the uncertainty in the pressure divided by 2, that'll give me a whole lot of pressure values that vary around the pressure I measured by the uncertainty that we think we have for our measurements. Likewise, I can estimate one time a measured Q as the value we think we've got plus some random Gaussian distributed noise in our uncertainty. And this time it'll be the uncertainty in Q divided by 2. That's the standard deviation of that random variation. If I do that many times, then I can find out what is the standard deviation of the measured pressure If I multiply that by 2, that'll give me an estimate of the uncertainty 
in the measured pressure. And that should give me back the same number that I had over here. But more importantly, if I do that calculation and get W dot measured and take the standard deviation of that value, multiply it by two, that'll lead me to my uncertainty in W dot. This one, direct analytic, works beautifully on paper. It's the best way to go on paper, provided you can do the derivatives. If you have a hard time doing the derivatives analytically, you can take this linear approximation and you can do this one fairly easily on paper, but it'll be more involved than the analytic one. The analytic uh, derivation, taking the derivatives, makes your problem solving time shorter on paper. But this works really well if you implement it on your, on your computer in code. This one, you can't possibly do enough samples because you're going to need thousands of random numbers here. Uh, you can't possibly do enough samples on paper. But it's a very powerful technique because it's simple to program on the computer. So even if this function is very complicated with a lot of nonlinearities, so that you can't get a good result out of this linear approximation, this Monte Carlo technique will allow you to simulate what's coming through your measurements directly, do it enough times, and you can find out what your uncertainty is. And we'll try that out in some examples in Jupyter Notebook.